All right, what's up, everyone? This is the watch this video for uh, Monday, June 3rd. If you did not attend our webinar on Thursday night, uh, we talked about the five aha moments that kind of helped us turn the corner to become professional day traders. And as we've been talking for a couple weeks, we gave away um, almost 40 minutes of our trading course that highlights one of our A plus setups in detail. And we did that because we actually want you to see that, hey, there are actually ways to look for setups that work and they're not regurgitated stuff that you can find from old pristine.com videos or, you know, it's, it's all proprietary and we gave it away. So hope you check it out. You want to see it? There's the website, greatstockpicks.com with an X, greatstockpicks with an X.com and click on trading course. And as simple as that. This scroll down right there, there's the video. About 40 minutes, we clipped it straight out of our trading course, all right? Uh, once you click this, I think you can maximize it to fill your screen so you don't have to look at it small like this. So hope you enjoy. Um, there'll also be, if you know where our free webinar page is, the entire webinar that we um, talked about our five aha moments um, is now uploaded to our free webinar page. So that is free webinar number 11. Hope you enjoy that as well. Um, showing you the spy chart here, there's nothing real pretty. We did bounce down or gap down, check, uh, kind of test the 200 day, little bit of a bounce, and now we are just, just like that, right below the 200 day. And there's a lot of headline risk out there. So, you know, you want to be careful. We are just trading what's in front of us, and that's really all you can do. Since I don't hold overnight, I never kind of sweat an ugly looking spy chart that feels like it might tank. Um, and you know what? Even if it does tank, I rarely short, but I don't, I'm still not fretting like, oh, there won't be anything to trade on the long side because there almost always is. And not to mention right here is an example of the market tanking. This was back in December and, um, you know, it lasted about three weeks and then you got the slow climb back up. So the beauty, if you, if you just scroll back and look through sell-offs, they happen fast and furious and then you get some nice trading environments. So keep that in mind. Everyone thinks, well, what do day traders do if you know if you're not if you don't know how to short or you don't want to short or you can't get too many shares or too many stocks short whatever? Um, so what's a day trader going to do if the market tanks? Um, I think that's a silly question because, like I said, the tanks are fast and furious, and you can kind of sidestep them and then wait for the bounce and then start trading again, right? And even on ugly days in an ugly market, there's usually something long to trade, something to think about. All right, anyway. DMPI has got to go and watch it closed well off of its highs on Friday. But remember, I'm a day trader. I look for unusual volume and stocks that are in play. Still closed above, I would say, the midway of its range on, uh, on Friday. So uh, certainly worth watching, especially with crazy moves like we've seen in ELTK recently. ELTK, speaking of which, um, had this huge two-day move and then um, you know a big reversal on Friday. Now, I mean, I don't think anybody thought that this should have gone from whatever it was, I don't know, $1.50 to over 11 And any time that happens, um, it's almost never justified. It's just one of those random, fairly rare short squeezes, okay? Um, I would like to see this come down for another day or two, and then I'd be really excited to play it on the long side. But on occasion, when you have something like this, you get a gap down the next day, and then a rip again. So if it gaps down tomorrow, um, it's gonna become super interesting to me for a potential long. Um, if it gaps down and just sells off, then it'll become super interesting to me uh, as the daily chart will look much better for a bounce for Tuesday. So this one has to be on your radar. If you're a day trader and you don't have this on your screens, in my opinion, you're doing it wrong. Kind of the same thing with SOLY. Um, it's certainly every day lately, last three sessions, sellers got taken, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, buyers got slapped, right? Big topping tail here, here. And the day was much more narrow on Friday, but still closing below its lows or below its uh, open and kind of near its lows. So. I still would like to see this, you know, have a couple days and come down into this, what we call the buy zone between the eight and the 20. And then I'd be super interested in this one as well. Um, but there's not that much to look at. So I'm certainly putting all the recent high flyers on my radar uh, going into Monday. Big volume in this GNCA. Now this one did close well off its highs. It went all the way up to uh, eight bucks before closing at 561. So I don't like this one very much because I like to see them at least stay in the upper half of the range when you have a crazy day like that. But doesn't cost me anything to have it on a chart, so I will. BYND, uh, there's not a whole lot of recent history to go on, but um, it IPO'd back here on, what, May 2nd? And now we're coming up, uh, it's been about a month, right? And it's really strong, and I like, I'll take uh, Friday's candle out of it 
kind of give you a better feel for why I like it. So on Thursday, it finally breaches 100, right? Gaps up above 100, goes over 105, and then reverses. And then typically you would think, okay, this thing may never see 100 again, right? It's way ahead of itself. And then on Friday, right back up near all-time high. So this can break Thursday Thursday's high. Um, I'm sorry, if this can break Friday's high on, on uh, Monday, it's probably also going to break Thursday's high and maybe squeeze. So again, it's far away from the like the eight days right here and it's way up here away from it. But sometimes things go farther than you'd expect. And I'll only take these trades with a proper intraday setup. So keep that in mind. OTLK to me is still kind of flagging. Uh, you had the big, here's the flagpole and then here's the flag itself. It's kind of at the bottom of this channel that's forming. So if it's going to bounce and it also hit the uh, 20 day on uh Friday. If it's going to bounce, I would like to see it probably happen Monday or Tuesday. So let's keep that one on watch too. If for no other reason, it's a recent high flyer. SYY, sometimes a stock, sellers get a hold of it on an intraday basis and they push it farther down than you would ever expect. And the very next day you get a nice bounce. So I'm not bullish on this chart. That's ugly action for SYY on Friday. Uh, it went all the way from here down to the 200 day. Um, so, so, so who knows? Maybe we get a decent bounce. Let me pan out, get that 200 day refreshed, um, which it has had a relationship with the 200 day back here. It was resistance, a uh, kind of resistance back here as well. Um, and if you look at some other big sell offs, here was one. It just went up from there. So uh, here's a couple day sell off and up. So anyway, I think it's worth watching, right? Um, and it's not a biotech because if it's a biotech, I uh, shy away from uh, looking for bounces after an ugly sell-off because a lot of times the ugly sell-off is extremely justified. Um, Foot Locker, just another red day. Ever since the gap down in FL, now you've got uh, one, two, three, five red days. Uh, it bounced nicely back in last March off the $38 area, and we're getting pretty darn close to that. So this is a, this is a good candidate for an afternoon rally just as a bounce play, so I'm gonna keep that on watch. A couple more, VLRX, kinda hard to see, but uh, reverse it. Uh, uh, zoom in here so you can see better. Recent reverse split back here. Sometimes these things get catch a bid, um, and it had this nice pop back here and a few days sideways. I don't love this one by any stretch, but again, uh, very tough for me to find anything to get excited about. So maybe I'm reaching a little bit on some of these charts. But again, having them on charts doesn't mean anything. Uh, I'll only trade them if I get a proper setup. And also this AVDL, which kind of feels like nobody's watching. Nice volume spike. Uh, what four sessions ago for this one, but look at the volume's gotten down to 139,000 on Friday. Having said that, I do like this volume spike here and this kind of tight flag. So who knows, right? But this thing's uh, really low volume stock. Um, that's it. That's all I've got. And I'm not in love with this list, but you know, with these some of these recent high flyers, we might catch a really nice setup and a nice trade. And we'll also add some gappers to this on uh, you know on Monday morning if we spot some decent gappers. So hopefully there'll be a couple nice trades on Monday and that's all I need to make a living. All right, I'm done babbling. See you guys on Monday.